Welcome to Bible 180 Number Numbers. Israel is leaving Mount Sinai on an indirect route to the Promised Land, led by the cloud of God's presence which rests over the tabernacle. They've received the covenant, broken it, and been reconciled because of God's mercy. Numbers are begins appropriately with a census. The 12 tribes are camped around the tabernacle, reminding them Yahweh's presence is central to their existence. There are to be daily, weekly, monthly, and festival offerings to the Lord to remind them of God's provision vision, presence, and providence for Israel. The Levites, who had rallied to Moses and Yahweh after the golden calf debacle, manage the tabernacle and count as the redemption price for the firstborn whom Yahweh had bought and saved from the angel of death. Aaron and his descendants are the priests who offer sacrifices. Neither Levites nor Aaron's descendants have any inheritance in the promised land. The Lord himself will be their inheritance, and the Israelites' offering would help sustain them. However, the Levites are to have towns scattered throughout Israel as their possession. God has watered, fed, led, and rescued the Hebrews, yet they're not grateful but rebellious. They have complained against Moses, Aaron and Yahweh. They whine about missing leeks, figs, and water. They complain that Yahweh is too close, then they complain that he's too distant. It's not like God lets this fester either. He sends down fire, poisonous snakes, leprosy, and opens up the earth to condemn and discipline. Yet rebellion against God happens numerous times. Even the Levites rebel against Aaron's family. Aaron and Miriam conspire against Moses, their brother. Moses eventually slips up. It doesn't matter if God punishes them or forgives them or restores them. Repeated miracles, victories, and punishments don't change their stubborn hearts. Opposition to Yahweh is not limited to Israel either. Sihon, Moab, Midian, and others try to stop God's plan. Israel has a hard enough time following God without interference, so Yahweh tells Israel not to compromise or marry outside the faith because it will corrupt their children and nation. Yet God will deliver the Israelites to the Promised Land. King Balak hires Balaam to curse the Israelites, but he can't. The providence of Yahweh is greater than the malice of God's enemies. The Israelites slander Moses and Yahweh, yet the Lord sends poisonous snakes, yet when they repent and look to the bronze snake lifted up, they are forgiven and restored. In chapter 10, God contemplates starting all over. Moses' arguments sound hollow to us, but it works on Yahweh. Moses has no reason why Israel should be spared except God's own plan, honor, and mercy. And Yahweh does relent. We are still prone to sin, yet God forgives and cares for us. Not because we are good or deserving or have earned it, but simply because God is good, honorable, just, and merciful. He delivers us to the promised land because He is loyal and faithful, even though we are fickle and irksome.